Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Especially the ones that you just can't deal with or maybe, let's get real, can't do anything for you. Today, let's get very practical and ask the question we have all wondered, do I really have to love them? Today, Joyce explains why you should give it your best effort. You see, everything that God gives us as a free gift, he wants us to give away as a free gift. It's to you and through you. We receive mercy from God, and then he tells us to be merciful. We receive kindness from God, be kind. We receive patience from God, be patient. The wonderful thing about God is he never expects us to do something that he doesn't equip us to do. He always shows us the way by first treating us the way he wants us to treat other people. I can tell you that the best estimate I can make from my years of ministry, approximately 70 to 80 percent of all Christians are mad at somebody. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> well, you don't know what they did to me, bless God. Well, let's back the train up and think about what we did to God. Hmm. <laughs> well, I'm not going to just keep forgiving them for the same thing over and over and over. Uh-oh. When you forgive people, you set yourself free. And you put them in God's hands. Let me ask you a question. Why would you want to spend your life being mad at somebody that's out having a good time and don't even care that you're upset? What sense does that make? And it, it has nothing to do with the love walk. Love covers a multitude of sins. Love forgives, and it forgives quickly in obedience to God. Loving people is about forgiving people. It's about being merciful to people, long-suffering with people. Hey, listen, I've had people in my life that I've wanted to give up on too. I'm quite sure that Dave wanted to give up on me a number of times. But you know what? I don't even think for him it was even an option because he trusted God that if he would keep loving me that God could change me. You see, I didn't really need somebody to tell me about Jesus. I needed somebody to show me Jesus. Are you there? And we're very good at the tell, but a lot of times we have no show. And that doesn't mean that we don't confront people. That doesn't mean that we just become a doormat and let everybody walk all over us and be abusive toward us. That's not love. Sometimes love has to be a tough version of love. But real love doesn't give up on people. Love always believes the best of every person. Let me just fast forward this and say that I tried every way that I could possibly try to be a happy Christian. And the truth of the matter was, even though I had a ministry and a sizable ministry, and I was born again, had the Holy Spirit in my life, didn't have any huge personal problems, I wasn't happy. Not really. I mean, I could be happy on a day when some big spectacular thing was happening, but there was always a low-level discontentment kind of a low-level dissatisfaction. Oh, God, I'm so tired of this. Is this all there is? I just, you know, is this all there is? Is this salvation thing all there is? <laughs> and one day, God gave me the opportunity to face some truth about myself. And the Lord just simply... said to me in my heart, you are unhappy because you're selfish. No, I'm unhappy because they, because you, because I need and I want. And, <laughs> and if I had, I would be happy. And if I didn't have, I would be happy. <laughs> But I can tell you, it just puts a Band-Aid on the problem that doesn't fix it.
You got to get to the root. And it is not possible to be selfish and be happy. How often do you get mad when you don't get your way? Just thought I'd throw that out. <laughs> I mean, I know how I was, and probably none of you were as bad as I was, because I was pretty bad. But, I mean, if I didn't get my way, then you might as well forget talking to me the rest of the day, because I'm going to go sit in a corner somewhere and sulk all day. I was man manipulative and controlling, full of self-pity. <laughs> I mean, I wanted to eat where I wanted to eat when I wanted to eat. I didn't care so much about what anybody else wanted. It was what about, you know, me, me, me. I know that we think that trying to get what we want is what's going to make us happy. And it might be a temporary little fleshly zing, but it's not a permanent answer. The only real permanent fix is to do exactly what the Bible says. Forget yourself, lose sight of yourself, Take up your cross and follow me. And that doesn't sound inviting, but it actually is wonderful. There is no freedom until we're free from us. Until I'm free from having to try to keep me happy all day, every day, then I'm not free. Amen? We fight and fight to get what we want. And here's the thing, tell God what you want and trust him to give it to you if it's right and when it's right. And if he doesn't give it to you, then be glad that he didn't because it must be something that you don't need. God has an individual plan for every one of us. You can't look at somebody else and say, why isn't God doing that for me? Because there's something else God's doing for you that they're looking at you saying, why doesn't God do that for me? Learn how to love people. It has been very grievous to me to see, and it's only because God has given me a real revelation on this, I believe, and not that I'm perfect at it because I'm not by any stretch of the imagination. But I really understand the importance of loving people. It's spiritual warfare. It's the highest form of spiritual warfare that you can do. If you have a strong love walk, I think it just disables the devil. And love means that you care about people. You don't want to hurt people. You're careful about how you treat people and how you talk to people. You care about people that are less fortunate than you are. You can't just hear about a need and say, well, isn't that a shame? You're going to do anything you can to help meet that need. And if you can't meet it by yourself, you may get radical enough to go get other few bored, miserable Christians and see if they'd like to get involved in helping meet a need. Amen? Something amazing happens on the inside of us when we get ourselves off of our mind and we really start to care about other people. Well, I've changed by the grace of God over the years, and I can honestly tell you, and I'm not tooting my own horn, I thank God for this, but I don't think there's very many days that go by that before nine o'clock in the morning, I haven't sat and purposely thought about something I can do for somebody else that day. And I'm talking about that's aside from this public ministry that I have. This is the thing that God has called me to do but I have a personal life like everybody else, and God has instructed me that what I teach other people to do in their personal life, I better be doing in mine. Otherwise, what I say is going to have zero anointing on it. And so I am very concerned about my own personal love walk and how I treat people and how I talk to people, and, and I'm especially interested in helping the poor and meeting needs for people. And it doesn't even have to be somebody that's in abject poverty. Just somebody, maybe, who needs a blessing. Somebody who hasn't had a new piece of clothes in five years. Or some single mom who never gets to take her kids out to eat. 
Why don't we wake up and stop going to church trying to get our blessing? And here's what happens. If we're not actively loving people, it's not very long and we get dissatisfied. Well, you know, this preacher just lost his anointing. I tell you, I'm just not getting anything out of being here anymore, Herbert. I think we need to look for someplace else. I remember a woman that came to me and she said, you know, Joyce, I have a confession. She said, I, I, I've been coming to your meetings for years and now they were starting to bore me. And she said, I was praying for you because I thought you had sin in your life or that you'd lost your anointing. And she said, it took a while, but God got it across to me that, that I was the problem that I wasn't getting anything out of your messages because I was already so full of the Word that I was doing nothing with that there was no room to put anything else. We're not supposed to go to church and just sit there and gawk at the preacher. I am called by God to equip and train up the saints that they might go out and do the work of the ministry. And I am going to motivate you to do something with the word that you know. Get yourself off your mind. Start loving other people radically and aggressively because that's the only way that you can ever be permanently happy. Jesus said, one new commandment I give unto you that you love one another just as I have loved you. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. If the body of Christ was on fire with love, the world would already be saved and we could be in heaven. Joyce has much more to say about this coming up. And let's take a moment to just help this really sink in. A very practical story from one of our social media friends talking about loving perhaps the most difficult of all people on the planet, bad drivers. <laughs> How many of us turn into someone completely different when we get behind the wheel? Well, Geraldine from Dayton, Ohio says, I was driving on the highway, trapped behind a person going no more than 40 miles per hour in the fast lane. As people passed us, they yelled and pointed their fists at her and I wanted to scream because I was stuck behind her as they drove on. Then I started praying for patience and she slowed down even more. <laughs> I love that. Before my rage could erupt, I clearly heard in my heart, I'm teaching you patience. I burst out laughing, my whole attitude changed. I started thinking this lady may be nervous with all of us driving bullies all around her. She's doing the best she can. I expected God to wave his hand and give me patience, but he had a much better plan. So he was teaching her not only to have patience, but how to love people and to put ourselves in their shoes. We want to hear from you today. Share with us on social media. How is helping other people helping you? In fact, we have a story coming up that is really going to put that in perspective. When we learn how to love other people and we invest in them, it changes our life. Go to Facebook, Joyce Meyer Ministries Facebook page, do it on Twitter. And while you're online, take a look at our YouTube channel. It is full of great things. Um, encouraging segments, other stories, interesting things like the one where Joyce bit Dave. Yeah, you heard me correctly. Go check it out for yourself. Right now, we do have that amazing story about a woman who found freedom from abuse and how loving others became what she describes as her promised land. And then, as we promised, there's more from Joyce with a very important point about a person you must learn to love. Once they started going, uh, into the mission field, I believed with my own heart that I was called to that. And when we go, especially with the medical team, you know, it's, I love because the medical brings the, hey, I care, you know, we care for you, we're here to help you. But and then we have the ministry part that reassure that and, and, and let them see that God really was the one that set the whole thing to show them how much he cares in a tangible way. 
I just absolutely love to encourage people and just bringing the light of the Lord Jesus and the hope of what He did in my life to them is definitely what became my passion. I was born in Brazil and uh, my family was very, very poor and very dysfunctional, uh, very abusive. I was sexually abused uh, at the age of seven. By the age of 19, I went, I went in a really wrong path, so I became a prostitute. I met one of my clients and um, I asked him to help me to come to America. However, when I arrived here, I thought that I was leaving all my baggage and all the hurt and all of those things in Brazil, but it really didn't happen. I got into a huge depression that led me to heavy drugs. I ended up marrying, I got pregnant, and um, after a year we got divorced. And now here I was in America uh, with a baby, single, uh, living a wild life with drugs. Came to find out after a few years into that lifestyle that I was pregnant for the second time. Without thinking, I called a friend and I asked her, you need to take me to a clinic. Uh, I'm having an abortion. I would love to say that I met Jesus in a church altar, but that really is not what happened to me. I know that I went to that abortion clinic and I know that I lay down on that table and I just remember seeing this very heavy darkness coming over me and I can't explain why I went through the whole procedure and afterwards I know that I met to him when he extended his hands to me and he pulled me out of that darkness. The very moment I was transformed, I had encountered a love that I can never explain. All I want is to know Him and to live my life for Him. I had already been born again with a, you know, a very awesome encounter with the Lord. and. Um, and I was just going through, I lost everything right after, which made no sense to me. And I was living totally by faith. But a lot of times I would just cry and cry and not understand, God, you know, I'm here now. I'm... I remember one day coming home from having a fit in my car. My God, why are you doing this, God? And, uh, and I turned the TV on and, and Joyce was saying the same thing. She was saying, and I remember those days when I would say, God, I don't understand, God, what's going on? And I looked, I was like, hmm, this is really interesting. How is she doing the same thing I was doing five minutes ago? Who is this lady? And I kept watching her, and I was like, whoa. You know, I was only complaining. And from that day on, I decided that I wouldn't do that anymore. And uh, I watched her every day, and uh, her teachings really inspired me, and little by little, God started changing my life. And literally, a year later, my entire life was completely turned around. By God's grace, He brought this amazing husband into my life. He restored my son's relationship with God. I see Joyce like somebody that is started, I would say, like me, without any hope of a future, I would say, because she decided to obey God, got her life completely transformed. And uh, to me, looking at that, it was like, okay, if he did for her, why not for me? And today I'm very, very happy and content where I am. And I never ever dreamed that I would be living this kind of life today. And that's why I say that the same ministry that helped me to get out of, the, of my wilderness was the same one that helped me to get to my promised land. Because, I don't know about you, but be able to go serve the people of God 
in eight nations in two and a half years. I call them my promised land. I'm very confident to invest into Joyce Maya Ministry because I have seen firsthand how they really make a difference in people's lives around the world. I had the opportunity to see the feeding program and the medical outreach and be part of sharing the gospel with thousands of people. And that's why I'm partnered with Joyce My Ministry. And I have no doubt that my money is being well invested, not only for this life, but for eternity. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I say to you. Now, the next thing that's important about this love thing is you got to learn to love yourself. Most people don't even like themselves, let alone love themselves. It's the truth. I don't like this about me, and I don't like that about me. I don't like this about me, and I don't like that about me. Well, why don't you just embrace all of you today? Well, but I, you know, but I don't like that, and I don't like that. You know, sometimes I'm around women that are really sweet. I just think, Joyce, why don't you try being a little bit softer, <laughs> nicer. You know what, I last about five minutes, and, <laughs> and then when I open my mouth, everything comes out as an explosion. <laughs> I mean, just imagine if I stood up here this morning and said, I want you all to know. I want you all to know that God loves you very much. I'd be on television about one day and that'd be the end of it. No, I got to get in your face and say, listen to me, God loves you. Well, so guess what? God made me the way I am for what he wants me to do. And I don't need to apologize for it and neither do you. Amen? Now, I don't mean to say by that that we shouldn't grow in the fruit of the Spirit. I study love and the fruit of the Spirit all the time. And it grieves me if I feel like that I am unkind to somebody. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm just talking about stop trying to be something that you're not. Stop trying to be like somebody else that you've got as a role model there that you think that you should be like. You can maybe learn some things from them as an example, but you can't be them. You're stuck with you. I said you're stuck with you. You better like yourself because everywhere you go, there you are. <laughs> you know what? It's a scary thought to think that I will never for one second in my whole life ever get away from me. I mean, that's pretty frightening. So I finally decided I mean, I don't enjoy even spending one hour with somebody I don't like. So to spend your whole life with somebody you don't like is really a nightmare. So I suggest that you decide today to come to terms of peace with yourself, embrace the who you are in Christ, and say, I love it, I love it all. And I challenge you every day to say out loud at least four or five times, I love myself. You don't need to say it to somebody, but just between you and God. Might not work too good if you went to work and said, I love myself, I love myself, oh, I love myself. You just have no idea. It just about gives the devil a nervous breakdown. When you start saying, I like myself. Matter of fact, I just love myself. I value myself in Christ. Hey, I'm not where I need to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. Woo, I'm making progress. Learning to love other people and to love yourself is a part of the process that God takes us all through. It's not always easy, but it's really a key to healing emotional wounds, helping our self-esteem, finding peace in your life, you name it. Love is a part of that equation. And like the Bible says, love never 
fails. Sometimes we fail, but if we put love first and the Holy Spirit takes over, God does amazing things. We want to help you understand that more. This is called The Love Revolution, and this is one of Joyce's books that is so powerful, and I bet a lot of you don't have it. This has stories and the Word of God. It talks about love. It helps us understand what love really is, but it will also really encourage you to walk in love every day. It has contributions from other people like John Maxwell, Darlene Check, uh, so many great stories in here that make it really practical. I think you're really going to enjoy this and you can get it today for any amount. That means whatever you're willing to give will go to not only get this book in your hands so that you can read it, share it with others, but it will help the ministry of Joyce Meyer Ministries. It will help us serve and love other people all over the world. So that's pretty awesome. And in the story today from Patricia, she talked about partnership, how being a part of Joyce Meyer Ministries has meant a lot to her. If you want to find out more, go to our website, JoyceMeyer.org, and join us. We would love to have you be a part of our family. If you're in Cleveland, Ohio, Joyce will be there next week. The conference is absolutely free. For more information, that's at our website, too. It's a great source of all kinds of information, and we hope to see you in Cleveland. And Join us next time right here on Everyday Answers. I am dead to sin, and I am alive to God, and I'm a whole new different creature now that you're going to be dealing with when the one that you have dealt with before. Got a question?